I came home from school one uh, afternoon and coming home, I stopped by my mother's place and she said, have you been home? I said, no. She said, well, there's trouble. I heard that your house might have been burnt. So I went to the house and of course our house was in ashes. I looked for my husband and I searched the house even though it was in ashes. It was the next day that his body was found. He has been chopped into pieces, you know, and, and, and the rest of the body was burnt. It was terrible. From that day, I decided if this is all you can do, if this is all they can do, then let me go into it. And that was the beginning of my engagement in politics. It has been quite traumatic. As a result of that, I contested, and I think I'm the first woman in this country to, um, to contest elections. Every mosque in Kano, every mosque in Kano, except the mosque in um, uh, 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 Bayero University, summoned against my election. I was not allowed in the air. You know, they bought up all the radio stations. They all summoned against me that nobody should vote a woman this and that. But I won the election. It was a landslide victory. I then realized that I have the ability to mobilize. It's not just the power of oratory, because what I'm saying is that you might be able to talk. You might have all the oratory skills, but you must talk the truth. That is the only way that people will have confidence in you and they will do what you want them to do. I've always said there are two sets of people on earth. The oppressors and the oppressed. And in between are the cowards and the hypocrites, which are you. The beauty of being in politics is that women are much more popular. Yes, this is what I, I have realized. Because they go out of their way. They go an extra mile to mobilize, to talk to people, which the men do not care to do. Any village that I go to, the remotest village I go to in Kano, you know, when they hear my voice, they ah, it's Naja. This is an injunction of the Quran. So Muhammad fought corruption. Jesus fought corruption. Each time I go on, on, on radio, the price of battery in Kano goes up. That is the much to which they want to listen to me because I give them direction and they believe me. I gave this radio broadcast against the governor. That night, they came in through the ceiling, cut into my bedroom, and, you know, smashed everything, like, a warning. If I had been there, this is what would have happened to you. So I think uh, women should generally take care of their security and make sure that they don't isolate themselves, you know. We have a lot of supporters and make sure that a lot of these supporters are with you all the time, 24-7. Yeah. When they talk of the affirmative action, you know, it's, it's self-deception because if, for instance, they say, okay, 30 women, 30% 30 of women from all political parties, I say, okay, how do you do it? Do you handpick 30 women and give them a free ticket and a free ride to the government house or to the, to the Senate, to the National Assembly? How do you do it? They still have to contest elections against each other or against the men. So how do you enforce it? It has never made sense to me, really. As we are talking today, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our people cannot pay 1,000 naira to solve malaria. You know, as we are talking today, a lot of girls with VVF are there 
But nobody is talking about them. The Ministry for Women Affairs has never discussed it. So why do we have a Ministry for Women Affairs? Whose purpose are they, are they serving? So when you make uh, uh, a section called woman leader, it's because they don't think we are serious. They just discard us. Why don't you have man leader? Women should never think that it, will, it is an easy ride. Wars are fought all over the world for power. So you just can't sit and, you know, paint your nails and be sissy and expect to get power. It's not possible. And I hate this concept of tokenism. We are women, you have nine ministers and you have women affairs minister. To me, it's irresponsible. To me, this is unacceptable that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria has given us equal rights. I want to take advantage of that equality. So I fight for it. One of the lessons that I have learned is that, one, you have to be very, very bold. And you should never mince your words. And you should never allow anybody to even think that you are weak. If they do one, you have to do triple. If they punch you, you punch them, punch, punch, punch. That is the only way to survive. You have to be a man, a man, a man to be in a man's world. I'm in politics to put the torch and show the people that these are your rights, go for them.